So this week, we're moving on to Samadhi. And we'll see, uh, we bring our sila right along, right along for the ride. Remember, we're creating our practice. Samadhi can be a confusing term because it can, it can mean concentration and it can also be used to connote a specific quality of tranquility. And it can be used to mean the development of the heart-mind through the practice of mindfulness meditation. All are correct. Concentration, tranquility, and the development of the heart-mind through the practice of mindfulness. But today, specifically, we're going to look at the latter one, at the development of the heart-mind through the, con- through the practice of mindfulness. Way back when, we started with the Buddha's foundational teachings, the Four Noble Truths, that defined the focus of his teachings, this handful of dharma, of human suffering, handful of leaves, the pa- and the path that leads out of suffering, the Eightfold Path. This path was not just intended for monastics. There's no secret handshake. It was intended for all of us. It was intended to be practiced for anyone who was interested and willing. No pressure. But in laying out the Eightfold Path, Buddha says, there's a way of relating to our experiences in our life, to the everydayness of our life that leads to less stress and to more ease of well-being and more peace. Of course, suffering will continue. Of course, of course, we'll make mistakes, hurt ourselves, hurt others. But we can begin to consider the ways that can reveal a path to less of it. So in the Eightfold Path, the Samadhi cluster of right effort, right concentration, and right mindfulness, these three form the contemplative arm, the meditative arm, the turning inward and gathering of our energies, the unifying of all of the disparate energies of body, heart, and mind right into the present moment. And they all need to work, all three of them, alone and together. Right effort is that balanced effort of not too tight, not too loose just enough energy to get the job done. And what job is that? Well, cultivating mindfulness right here and now. And how do we do that? We set up the practice deliberately. We set it up by tuning in and bringing the body into stillness, which in and of itself is an expression of concentration, of collectedness. We settle the body down stabilize it, develop it as a foundation, as a container, as a vehicle, as a grounding wire for the ephemeral heart-mind. The body is a location, the address for the heart-mind and a tether for it. We tune in and we gather the mind's distracted attentions into a more collected kind of attention, a steadier, more interested, more unified kind of attention. Yup, now you've got my full attention. Now you've got it, however much I've got right now. And then we tune in our hearts. We see how they are, where they are, where they've been, their condition. And offer, offer it attention, the attention that it needs to feel more settled, more relaxed, more open and receptive. Now we've set up the conditions for samadhi, for the development of the heart-mind. But think about it. Most of the time, we're busy doing something. Our energies are either dispersed, running out into different directions, or we're hyper-focused on something, or we're exhausted. We're good at extremes. Check it out. It's the middleness where we struggle. We, we struggle to grasp at the middleness. And then once we've got that, once we've grasped the middleness, now we try to hold on to it until we recognize that it's not about holding on. It's just about staying in the vicinity. Often the mind is busy on one task 
the body is busy doing another, and the heart is managing a third issue or completely cut off because, eh, because doing doesn't necessarily involve the heart. <laughs> that doesn't sound right, does it? Doing doesn't really involve the heart. But you know, when you're doing the mundane tasks of your life, where's the heart really? Most of the time, we're not ooing and eyeing and loving vacuuming. <laughs> we just do it to get the job done. You know what I mean. We don't really feel it. So the body could be exercising. It can be slumped on the sofa with a, with a bag of popcorn. It can be cutting a tomato while we are rehearsing a conversation we're about to have with our partner. Or, and our heart, our heart, is as cool as the frost on, uh, on the grass in, in spring. It's as cool as that. There's no priority given to how we're feeling in that moment. It's just about cutting the vegetables, thinking about that thought. I'm not caring about how I'm doing any of that. This division costs. The energies are dispersed. We get absorbed, they eat up, they waste our precious finite mind energy, heart energy, and body energy when they are dispersed. So we slowly begin to gather them all in one place. We gather them one in all place. And when we gather them in one place, we start to see that when we have been unskillful, the mind is harder to settle. So this brings us to the role of sila in samadhi. The more skillful we are, the easier it is for the heart mind to settle down when we take our seat. The more unskillful we are, the more it will come back to haunt us on the cushion. We'll spend more of our time dealing with and cooking out the residue of our unskillfulness, all the scrappy moments and reactivity that has or has not yet been released will come up and greet us. <laughs> this is why folks don't like to sit because we have to see and feel these stirrings. Go slow, be gentle, pace yourself. You're still a good person. Do the best you can. Do the best you can with not causing harm for yourself, right? And also sit with others. It's such a support that fortifies us. It's like this. If we've had a tussle, if Bill and I have had a tussle, we're likely to encounter restlessness and agitation on the cushion. Expect this, easy does it. Breathe with it, in and around it, through it. No judgment, just look, that's the point. Feel, that's the point, it's okay. You're still a good person, I'm still a good person, he's still a good person, we all deal with this. This is just the surface junk that, that comes up when we take our seat in the day, in daily life. Easy does it. The right effort of samadhi says, see the strain, see the upset, see the struggle. See if you can smooth that out a little bit. Right concentration says, find a safe distance to steady yourself. Stand still and witness, look. Get to know what's happening from that safe place. Walk around it 360 degrees. That's what right mindfulness will do. It'll have us look around 360 degrees, see what's going on. Easy does it. Just enough effort to get the job done. Just enough stability to stay safe and see what's going on. Just enough mindfulness to discern how to move, if to move, when to move, where to move and how to move. One last observation. We're not just good multitaskers. We're striving, zealous, overly heavy handed in our approach to doing our tasks, most of the time anyway. That energy is more like an express train coming in for a stop than a gentle landing of Bill's bird. Though I love that big bird, and I do, it's often a rough, rocky landing on the cushion. Easy does it. Easy does it. Use the supports that are available to you. Make yourself as comfortable as possible when you set up your practice. This is the art of samadhi. It's feeling into 
and meeting ourselves right where we are and then setting up the conditions for the heart mind to settle down and see what's happening. It's not about manhandling. It's not about running roughshod or bullying ourselves into stillness. No, no, no. It's about preparing. It's about setting the stage. It's about creating the conditions, not once, but many times, repeatedly in the course of one sitting, setting up the conditions to be mindful. Gather the energies more as if you're giving a wild stallion a wide pasture to run around and settle in. Just sense the wide pasture. Settle back into a safe place and watch that stallion run around and settle on its own. It will of its own accord in its own time. We can do this. We can create the conditions that we need right now to be mindful. This is for our welfare. We can do this. Thank you for your kind attention.